Hello to the beautiful family of Patria, and we just want to welcome you back to another online service that we're going to do together. Um, we want to also welcome any person who is viewing this from outside of the perimeters of George here in South Africa. We know that we have the whole of the congregation that we invited in Mossel Bay, Patria Mossel Bay. We have family and friends from around every nation globally that are tuning in. Um, viewing this, but then also we have a lot of family members and friends who have been invited by congregants, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ from here in Patria, George. And so we want to welcome everyone, no matter where you are tuning in from, seeing that this is online, on YouTube, no matter who you are, in whatever way you got to this material, we just want to welcome you to this service. And we really hope and pray that even if it's just this one that you are viewing, that you will find tremendous joy in tuning in and that the truth that is going to be spoken today will, will really hit your heart. We have a beautiful announcement to make and the, the first announcement is that we have a Victory Weekend coming up next weekend. So if you want to join Victory Weekend next weekend, please make sure that you contact the church offices um, on Monday because you need to enter quickly um, because you're going to have to do the preparing for victory um, during this week so you need that material early on so if you want to join us next weekend for victory weekend please make sure to enter and then also we had the parenting course that we did during this weekend and to Rudy and Renette and Scotty and Liesel and the whole team that was involved there thank you so much for a beautiful beautiful focus um, conference or uh, or course that you guys ran. This was a first. It was a curriculum that was written um, by the team, and uh, and Scotty and Liesel took took charge of um, writing this material. And we are just so proud of what is coming out of Patria. And we want to we want to encourage everyone to become the full gift that God has made you. And so, Scotty and Liesel, thank you so much for standing up and taking charge of equipping and preparing parents to raise kingdom thinkers. And that is also what we want to speak about today. Renella and myself had the beautiful privilege of doing one of the sessions, preparing or parenting out of the spirit. And that is exactly what I felt was fitting as a sermon today. So, this was our session, parenting out of the spirit, and seeing that this session looked at the whole of what was going to be treated in the material. We went through the material and wanted to honor the team um, with the material that they did. What we wanted to do is just introduce what it means to parent out of the spirit. But then also you might be a person as a parent. You might be a person sitting um, and going to become a parent or you are just a child and still you have a parent and and therefore to think about some of these concepts is extremely important to me and today I want to specifically speak about living out of the spirit and that is going to be the aim of today's sermon living out of the spirit and so I'm not going to focus on the parenting portion of that but we are going to speak towards living out of the spirit and I know that it's a topic that we are focusing a lot on but I do want to encourage you to not be familiar with the scriptures that we're going to go through. We have looked at a lot of these scriptures in many ways, but I want to re-emphasize these scriptures to us today. So let us enjoy a beautiful time of fellowship with the Holy Spirit in song, and then we're going to go into the sermon. Than the air that we breathe, deeper than the oceans beneath, matchless in all of your ways, you are closer than the air. You uphold everything 
I just love that song, Closer Than the Air That I Breathe. And uh, I have said it many times, every single time that I listen to that song, it helps me think about the words because those words mean that when I take a breath, my lungs are filled with air and I tap oxygen out of that, which brings life to my body. However, he is closer than the air that I breathe. And I so appreciate and enjoy the fact that God has given us the ability to ponder, to think about deep things like this. I don't know where you find yourself today. I'm not sure what your week was like. I had quite a hectic week, to be honest. My week was filled with emotions I did not want. It was filled with thoughts that came at me that I did not ask for. It was flooded with attacks that I did not go and seek. But the point of it all is that we live in a hostile world. And God has warned us that in this world, we have an enemy whose name is Satan. And that enemy is trying everything and anything he can to make us each other's enemy. And it is so important to me to recognize that church is supposed to be that unity, that display of unity, that display of absolute love and understanding to a world out there. But it's so easy to be tripped up by the attacks of Satan. 
And therefore today, what I want to speak about was exactly, I want to tap into the anointing of that parenting course that was done this weekend. And the name of that parenting course, as we said, is Focus. And so, as I mentioned in the introduction, Renella myself did parenting out of the spirit. And it was Raising Kingdom Thinkers. And Raising Kingdom Thinkers is not only for parents. And it's not only for parents. So what we want to speak about today is living out of the spirit. And we want to raise you. And, and that means us, all of us needs to focus so that we can be raised into kingdom thinkers. So therefore, I want to tap into the name of the course, and I want to use that as a title. And so therefore, um, Scotty and Liesel, if there are any royalties that's going to come from the sermon, I will share the royalties with you because that focus was all their idea. And, uh, and so therefore, bear with me in claiming this name for the sermon. Okay. Living out of the Spirit is extremely important because that is actually the only way for a Christian to live. Um, and I want to constantly highlight that. The reason I want to do it is that this week I have sat with so many disciples and friends and brothers. And in sitting um, in meetings, sitting in coffees, sitting in uh, discipleship setups, I've realized over and over and over again this week that the spiritual atmosphere that we currently live in is a spiritual atmosphere flooded with uncertainty, flooded with disaster, flooded with death in the flesh. Many people are dying currently because of COVID. When we listen to the conversations of vaccinations and we see the, the joy of those who have been vaccinated and then others posting that the vaccinations doesn't work and just the, everything that's standing up and, and, and it's just fear-driven, anger-driven, perception and perspective is, is haywire. And the most important thing for us as kingdom thinkers is that I need to live out of the Spirit. And so therefore, when I live out of the Spirit, it's not just any Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit. It's a capital S there, living out of the Spirit, not just my Spirit. See, because I have a Spirit. I have my own personal Spirit. But the thing is, my Spirit is submitted to the will of our Father, and therefore I have given full access to my Spirit, to the Holy Spirit. That's what ultimate Christianity is all about. So that, that's why I want to use the word focus to say, guys, let's focus on this. To become kingdom thinkers, we must understand that we are spirit. And that was one of the first points that we mentioned in the parenting course as well. If you want to raise a godly child, if you want to raise your children as godly kingdom thinkers, one of the main things you have to understand is that you are spirit. If you want to live life and Christianity needs to make sense to you, and you, if you want to read the scriptures, if you read this word, but you are not Focus on the fact that you are spirit, you will miss it. You will miss Christianity because you're going to want to be good. You're going to want to be a good person, but put your foot in the trap of religion. I did a post this week, which I did a few years ago. So I, I retweeted or redid uh, the, the, the quote on being spirit. And it was so important to me to to just once again highlight to us that our battles are not against flesh and blood. Our battles are not against each other. And Satan comes in and destroys, absolutely kills relationship because we do not focus on, the, on the, where the attack actually lies. Satan comes in to steal and rob relationship due to the fact that he is the one that punches at us. He punches at previous strongholds. He punches at previous hurts. He has a vile, destructive way in which he destroys relationship because he hits at hurts, pains, unforgiveness, most probably, and a lot of things that he lied to us about years ago, which we might still believe, and that created habits of thinking, patterns of thinking. And so the way that Satan comes at us usually is all about lies we already believe. 
And therefore, it's important to me that when we look at what Scripture says to us about life, about what we need to understand about life, I want us to recognize what God says to us about spirit. And so therefore, I'm going to highlight just once again a scripture that we've mentioned so many times. I'm going to ask, please bear with me, but do not be familiar with the scripture. Hear the scripture as if for the first time. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11 to 12. No one can know what anyone else is really thinking except that person alone. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And God has actually given us his spirit, not the world's spirit. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Every scripture that I'm going to use today has been used during the last few months of sermons. You're going to recognize every single scripture. I want to highlight these scriptures. These are the scriptures that we, we taught on when it came to parenting out of the Spirit. I want to say these are the scriptures that we're now focusing on, on living out of the Spirit. Because no matter what we do, we must recognize that truth. God has given us His Spirit. Church, it's not our claim to fame. That's our life. That is our life source. The Holy Spirit. God has actually given us His Spirit, not the world's Spirit. So we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. If you take 2 Peter 1, Verse 5, he says he has given us the wonderful things, freely, has given every promise, yes and amen. And the most important thing that we must recognize about this truth is that God makes it clear from Scripture that we must make every effort to prove that his promises has become our reality. And that's what I want to focus on when we speak about this focus point. And so therefore, I want to go into another scripture. And because this scripture we have preached on also so many times, you're going to look at this and go, man, Pierre, you just cannot leave the scripture alone. Well, because it's from the word of God. No, I can't. And the reason I can't, church, is the following. I see a lot of worry, stress, fear, and anxiety in some of my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ today. I see a lot of people being pulled down and into having the spirit of the world, which that previous scripture just said, we don't have the spirit of this world. We have his Holy Spirit. God does not worry. He is not anxious. He is not stressed. Some people think that to stress and to worry is stewardship. To stress and to worry is not stewardship. To make every effort to prove that his promises have become your reality. Undeserved favor. That is your reality. That is what you must focus on as a Christian. And so therefore do not in any way fall for the trap of unbelief and a hardened heart. If you grew up stressing because your parents usually stressed. You need to understand one thing. That is a stronghold. I have dealt with so many people during this week where this is an absolute reality to them. They think that to be anxious and to stress is normal. Church, we cannot in any way take hands with that thinking. That is demonic in nature, to be anxious and to worry and to stress. When God's word makes it clear what he has given us, and so therefore, because he has given us the Holy Spirit, because we have the Holy Spirit, and because every promise has been made yes and amen, his word makes it clear that if we understand our dependence upon him, he will give us his undeserved favor, that which you could do nothing for. And therefore, I want to read you Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which results, um, reassures the heart, 
That peace which transcends all understanding. That peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. That peace. <laughs> that peace which reassures the heart. That peace which transcends all understanding. That peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace. That peace is yours. See, when we focus on living in the Spirit, we understand that the battle is for our mind and our emotions. And that is what Satan is very cunning with. I see a lot of Christians live with anxiety, worry, stress, and fear. And it's as if we forgot what God warned us about. One of the things that we taught on as parenting out of the spirit was that if you do not believe that you are spirit, you have a trouble. You have a problem. As a Christian, if you don't, if you don't physically believe that you primarily are spirit, you have a body, then you're in trouble. Because then scripture won't make sense to you. And Satan is going to make you focus more on your fleshly nature, your worry, your stress, your fear, because of COVID, because of the looting that is taking place around the world, because of everything that seems so dark. We can't stress and worry because everything around us is dark, because Scripture warned us about it, church. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The saddest reality of many Christians today is I can quote scripture as to he will send his angels regarding us. I can quote scripture as to that he empowers us to live a life that is above and not below. I can quote scripture. I can quote scripture. But many Christians, after quoting that scripture, hearing that scripture, goes, yes, but. And then they state the negative. That we have preached on is placing the but incorrectly. The but must always follow the negative. See, the negative should not focus or follow the, the truth. The word of God is the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. If you have a but after focusing on any scripture that the truth, the way, the truth, and the life has stated as Holy Spirit inspired, if you quote scripture and you say, but we must be real, but we must face reality, but we cannot be naive. Say, um, and I go, wait, wait, wait. So what you just did is your but just overruled the absolute truth? Can I tell you what the absolute truth told us? For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Not might, shall. And deep darkness, the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you church even if that is on the cross or being burned because of your faith or being shot because you believe in jesus christ his glory will arise over you see because to the christian we don't fear and stress like the world does because why we don't have the spirit of this world remember as we read in corinthians 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. Colossians 3 is a scripture that I'm going to re-quote. You're going to say, but Pierre, you, you quoted most of these last week. Yes, but my angle's different this week. So listen to the scripture again in the message. So if you're serious about living this resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. 
I am seated with Christ in heavenly places from where he rules over everything in heaven and earth and under the earth. And so, church, to focus on the Spirit. Do you understand the word that we need to highlight when it comes to focusing on the Spirit? The word that we need to focus on is trust. Because either I trust God and that his word is true or I don't trust God and I have an attitude of unbelief because I've already given up ground of my salvation and my righteousness to Satan's thinking. And that is what Satan's after. If we focus our perspective to a fleshly thinking, a nature that looks at things and hears things and that becomes your reality, then you are not living out of the Spirit. So let us look at just a few scriptures again, looking at the word trust. Psalm 62 verse 8. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Can I read that again? Please let this sink in. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Can I just leave it up there? And if you will allow me, this might seem annoying. But we sang a song, we listened to a song closer than the air that I breathe. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship. And in a relationship, you trust the one that is stronger. You trust the one with your life that is stronger, the one that is your actual life. God is our life. Jesus is our life. He is the source of life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And because He is the source of our life, we trust Him. But I trust in you, O Lord, I say. You are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemy and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I have cried out to you, but let the wicked be put to shame and lie silent in the grave. Let their lying lips be silenced, for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. See what David did. He was a man after God's own heart. Eva uh, doing, doing, doing so many awful things and, 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 and sleeping outside of marriage, impregnating a, a woman who was someone else's wife and then killing him to hide the pregnancy. David understood God's heart. He repented well. He broke down and said, forgive me, Lord, for I've sinned. He understood what Jesus was coming for ahead of time. That's what made him a phenomenal leader. He knew that he himself could not save him. He trusted in righteousness and that God was going to count everyone righteous through a price that he was going to send. So he believed forward to the cross of Jesus. And then he said, I put my trust in the Lord. You are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me. From my enemies. He, he is a phenomenal example of understanding grace. And, and, and that was an Old Testament. So we now live in New Testament. Matthew 11, 11 says, For I tell you the truth that before John the Baptist there was none greater than he born of a woman. Yet even the least of these in the kingdom of God is greater than he. I'm going to read you Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That's what we want to stand for. And so, church, I want to highlight uh, the scripture in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. If you try to understand what is going on in the world today, you will be anxious. If you try and understand, when you look and you reason like a mere human, you will stress. But God's word says, trust 
in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight, which I love. So now I want to quote you three verses. Okay, and the three verses that I'm going to quote is I'm um, going to look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11 to 12, which we started off with. I'm going to skip to verse 14, okay? And then I'm going to come back to verse 13. So I'm going to go 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11 to 12. We started off with a scripture. No one can know what anyone else is really thinking except that person alone. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And God has actually given us His Spirit, not the world's Spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. I'm going to skip verse 13 and come to verse 14. But people who aren't Christians can't understand these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them because only those who have the Spirit can understand what the Spirit means. So church, my question is, do you understand verse 13? Do you understand what Paul is saying here? When we tell you this, we do not use words of human wisdom. We speak words given to us by the Spirit using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. So when I say the following, do not worry, do not stress, do not fear, make every effort to prove that His promises have become your reality. I do not use words of human wisdom. I speak words that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do and He will lead your path. And then when He leads your path and it seems like undeserved favor, do not worry because you don't understand. Do not stress because you do not understand. God's Word says do not be anxious about anything. When I use these words, do not be anxious. I do not use words of mere use, human wisdom. I use words of the Spirit. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts, and your minds. And so therefore, church, focus. Focus on living out of the Spirit for our battles, not against flesh and blood. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Stop gossiping, striving, fighting, bickering. Stop with human perspective and perceptions that is out of Human fleshly behavior led by demonic lies. Speak life. Speak truth. Love others. Lift them up. Speak words of affirmation. Speak words of life. That is our battle. And Satan is trying to make us speak words that are vile, that sows disunity and discourse. Let us not fall for that. Can we pray together? Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you so much that we can ask you through the Holy Spirit to help us focus. Thank you so much for every person who tuned in. And I pray a blessing over the sermon and also that all of us will understand that you are the way, the truth, and the life and that you rule from heavenly places over everything in heaven and earth and under the earth with all authority and that we are seated with you there and therefore, Lord, we do not have to stress. We do not have to worry. Abba Father, thank you that we can pray 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Church, I love you. Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much for standing strong. Let us have a week of strong spiritual focus to live out of the Spirit. I hope you enjoyed this. Be blessed. Bye-bye.